Hello and welcome Arsushim in the hangar where I test things like this the 3D Maker Pro 2 cam 3D scanner. Today you will get my honest opinion, so I will not try to sell you this. My channel has a good reputation of showing those products as they are. So my usual disclaimer, 3D Maker sent this device for free to me, so I can make a review and tell you how good or bad it is. I don't have to get my video approved by them. You get my opinion and not theirs. Let's quickly try to find out if this thing is any better than, for example, the Otter Light. 3 scanner that I tested earlier or some advanced stuff like this laser line scanner from Creality is still a cable version of the major downsides of these systems so 3D Maker and I tested the fancy LiDAR scanner from them and they also have a Moose and Whale they have other 3D scanners, con conventional ones but they approached this thing here it's a little laptop with 3D scanner hardware. As such, it will be more expensive than a handheld. And it's meant to be a 3D scanning tool, which does everything in one device for you and make your life easier if you if you want to create computer assets. What, what do you do with 3D scanners? Sometimes I also like to design my own 3D parts, mounts for a bike handle. So it just snaps in place, you don't have to screw it. And in my case, it has this mount for a little basket in the front. Most of these cases I need some reference measurements and if I have a 3D mesh in my 3D drawing program I see where those clamps need to be to clamp onto the bike handle and so forth. So for this I really like to use them. If you scan smaller things, figurines, small detailed stuff, I would recommend the Creality Otter Light because it has a grip with Wi-Fi built in and in my review you see me scanning a whole bike, a motorbike. This looks proper, proper good. I love it. So this works quite well and is quite accurate. I love it. If you really need a lot of accuracy and are not afraid to put on tracker marks, this line laser based scanner, the Creality Raptor, I think it's called. There is also a wireless version of this. Creality Raptor is really, really accurate. Like this one here is the best in terms of tracking and accuracy. If you have the tracker marks, here you don't actually need tracker marks. And here the tracker marks never really work that well for me. I didn't try to scan my whole car and put a million of dots on my car to scan it. Maybe there it works, that's the application that they show. This scans either in texture mode or in geometry mode. The speciality of this thing here it is has two cameras. So the narrow lens is for small objects and the wide angle is for things like your car or the desk. And I scanned, as you see here, our seaplane on the desk. If you see a green 3D object, everything's fine, tracking is fine. I get the message that I'm too close, but it's okay. But you see, for those larger objects, now I lost tracking. Of course, I also want to have a good angle from below, at least from the side. It's not really that much better than what I achieved with the with the Otter Light and with the Otter Light. The scan was not perfect, but still I could produce something like this here with some work on the model. And I like this. The only downsides I found on these things is first tracking can get lost. It has a reflective screen and it is black, so it's a bit harder to scan. The lost orientation, so you see if I zoom in. We kind of merged. And I've had this in numerous scans, smaller scans. I 
After the finished scan you have to hit process, there's no way around, no save and process later. You hit uh, the check mark and it processes for 10 minutes minimum up to 30-40 minutes and that's really... If you need to scan a few objects in a row, you have a lot of standstill time in between and that's for me that's a no-go. It appears to get stuck at 45%. This is global optimizations. I think they will improve the progress bar behavior so that the user doesn't think it's crashed there. Maybe they find a way to scan, save without processing, go to the next scan and then in the batch process where it says plug in power and sits somewhere on the table can process all of the scans in a batch job. That would be pre preferable. Okay, that was a really easy scan of this owl. I think yeah, the responsiveness of the display is quite good. Cut mode. And you see like the closing line is really straight. Mark it that way and then you just cut. Yes, I cut away a little bit of the bottom, but so now that we removed unnecessary data, I said high quality because apply. I think the fusion, the removal and the gap closing. Of course, we can also do this on our powerful PCs, but since this is a all-in-one device, I want to do as much as possible here on the device itself. Okay, with the high quality, we have a lot of sharpening now. That's not ideal and this little owl first of all we should rename it owl and then you can export to either computer or usb drive export to computer means over wi-fi and you need their program running on the computer it's a bit complicated usb copies way better i really like that you can dial down the fan speed now to in my case here 30 percent usb-c interface not only power delivery we finally can attach a usb stick that makes transferring the scans if they ever finish to the storage card really easy it would have been even easier if they included the storage card slot in this device and now we can take these files to a computer and edit them there but just for the sake of comparison I want to use the laptop here. Okay, in that case it really should be easy. Just hold the scanner steady. Let the rotation do its thing. And to stay fair, stop now, since this is one revolution. And this looks already quite good. Same trick. Straight line. The diffusion with default parameters. I'd say it's done in under a minute. Of course, this is a pretty powerful laptop. Bit of an unfair comparison. The hardware in this versus the hardware in that. Yeah, the results are just really, really good. And this is, this is, damn it, this is the best case scenario. So, Creality gives you this scan example owl for a reason. It's really got a lot of features it's easy to scan in texture or in geometry mode because it has both it has texture and geometry so if this gives you issues then <laughs> the toucan versus the otter the otter is supposed to be cheaper way cheaper you still need a laptop but on the toucan i need the laptop anyways i'm not sure i i just don't for these kinds of scans i don't see the point in the toucan each time choose the otter. Less steps, way less hassle. Because I don't have to transfer it from the external device to the laptop, it's already there. It's faster in that way. The software seems to be more refined. Like literally with each of my tests, the way cheaper handheld things won in terms of accuracy. This is not the best for scanning small objects. I get a lot of tracking issues. I feel like the texture mode with good lighting environment like here works better than geometry remote. So why this high angle shot? Well, let's see if we can get an additional bonus of this device. If we switch to far mode, which is meant to scan larger objects. It's now a really large scan. 
And if you need these kinds of scans, I mean I'm not 100% sure if this will be accurate once this is meshed. And you see in the region where my drones are, it became too featureless for him. Then it starts to fall apart. And also there in the shadow regions below. This is somewhat between a smaller 3D scanner and a larger LiDAR scanner. So this thing could serve a need for you if you need larger scans. Little background of this, I've been testing this for months now because I was invited early and I got a prototype which didn't work well at all and I had so many things on my feedback list. I sent them numerous mails and went back and forth. But in the end they came out with the third revision of hardware and this now works quite well. Let's do a very very quick look at what you get in the box. It's the device itself. I actually opened up one of these devices and looked inside it and it has an ARM Cortex processor. You will see the specs now and it has, it looks like laptop hardware to me. It runs a Linux on it. You even can connect with SSH on it. Uh, you get a tripod with those extension rods. You get this calibration card. That's a silicone case to protect your investment. It grips nicer with this. And you also get this nice case, turntable, a manual turntable, and their packaging is quite nice now, kind of Apple style. So yeah, my battery just died here, sorry, that's really unprofessional. So you also get the manual, uh, tracker points, things like this charger here, which can also charge your <laughs> YouTube camera. In the end it comes down to how good this tool really works in your daily workflow, and for me it worked kind of yeah, sometimes I got really nice surprises and then while scanning simple objects I got a little bit of disappointments. Let's head up to my good gaming rig, which is good for 3D processing as well, and examine my 3D scans and show you how good or how bad they went. And then you should be able to form a good decision whether or not you want to buy this thing. And if you want to buy it, check out my affiliate link down below, uh, it helps my channel. One of my test objects from the Wonka with a lot of fine details, which is good to test. Got a lot of wrong orientations. I had good light and everything, but yeah, you see the result is not really nice. Scanning my FPV goggles worked quite nice on the other hand. Two-sided scan, scanned it first this orientation and then flipped it over, regained tracking after some fighting and then scanned the underside. Tried to scan can my father-in-law. The face is really detailed. You have to close your eyes because of the strong laser. Maybe you can use the class 1 laser but it's still bad for the eyes. Ears, everything, hairs started to work but like on the back of the head I had severe tracking issues. A really large scan and where I keep my 3D printers and this could be used for referencing, for measuring distances as this thing is quite accurate, but it's the largest scan that I did with a normal scanner. This office cupboard here worked kind of nice, like in the bottom here. It recognized enough features in texture mode. Devices, the flower here, little document stand, but here where our coffee machine sits. Coffee machine also worked kind of nice. This here is a double image and you also see like the whole thing lost orientation here a bit. And here I quickly scanned my large RC car. On the table you see even the chair in the front, the point cloud and jump to the mesh that I calculated and that I cut. I left this little turntable with the owl we saw earlier for a size comparison. 1 over 8 scale models are no problem. Detail is Medium good of course only. The bumpiness of the surface is not the greatest. I think I used high detail which it just added a lot of digital noise or sharpening in my opinion. So this in the front is black TPU, not the easiest to scan. No scanning spray, no markers, no nothing here. In my opinion it's pretty nice scan if you want to print a scaled down version of this like in really tiny. It could work. And two more examples of a really large scan. Desk, show you the mesh now, it looks a lot cleaner. Once again, for size, this is the little hour on the turntable. This is a USB cable. 
a lot of mess, some tools, boxes, some things that were black that couldn't be scanned. Pretty impressive once again. Better than what you get with the LiDAR. Then here we have the other edge and it's a bit hard to see what it should be. But with the mesh it becomes cleaner and you see I have this kind of camera crane thingy here. Here's my YouTube recording cam. Some camera gear on the pegboard here. The pegboard uh, is kind of okay. -ish. So here's my Krogu scan. This is about 30 centimeters tall. Software really refined this model with all its holes, a lot bloaty region in this one hand. So it removed its entire hand. Unfortunate, <laughs> but in general, head is a rubberish, quite easy to scan surface. The eyes are black, those had to be filled out. And this is just fabric, which also works kind of good. I say it's medium well. And you should export it to STL, not OBJ. STL is way faster in exporting. Kogo mesh, save. It's like a few seconds only.